for anything there, but of course, uh, you know, he can easily make an Overseer, so he might lose some drones here, definitely not going to be, uh, you know, any kind of devastating loss, and there's actually some Blue Flame Hellions at Chef's goal, basically, it's like he lost a sizable amount of drones there, but uh, these guys actually both at uh, 54 and 57 drones against actually 71 and 57 SCVs, so, uh, I mean, the Techno Vikings, these guys really know what's going on, you know, he's got two Robos up, he doesn't actually have a Robo Bay, but uh, you can make a ton of Immortals, and a ton of Immortals might actually be, be good against what uh, we're going to see soon, which is Ultralist, man. We're going to see some Ultralist, dude. He's oh got that uh, Ultralist cavern about halfway done. What are you thinking, Rhett? Ultralists <laughs> when you can go Broodlords. Oh, man. Well, you know, maybe his uh, his choice was influenced by the presence of uh, Phoenix on the map. I don't know. A couple force fields not doing a whole lot. Looks like they are going to tech into so many tanks. No, what are you guys doing? They're getting torn to pieces. Feedback going down on all those investors. My computer cannot even handle it. Force fields walling them off. And now that the army counts have diminished a little bit, there goes the frame rate increasing a little bit. But... I cannot tell what is going on, Ebony, at a BC. Fill us in. I think it looks like it's enough roaches to just power through this. The infested Terrans did a great job soaking up, but most of these investors are out of energy now. There's a couple actually still with a lot from Sheth, and if he just keeps spamming it, uh, they might be able to beast through this. And once again, they've actually got a lot of money. I'm clicking them. Actually, it's Sheth who's floating about uh, a fair amount of money. He's actually got a whole bunch of corruptors about to pop, and he's got that greatest power. It's actually making five blue lords as well, so... I mean, they've killed a lot of stuff here, a lot of the expensive units, and they're going to be replacing those with uh, some even better ones. Nonetheless, though, they didn't take out the Nexus. Um, a lot of tanks remain. I, I feel like that was a little bit of a wash, perhaps. It was, you know, but Zerg, they can sometimes afford to do those kind of attacks exactly. just to wear down on the the opponent's army. You know, if it's a ZVP, you cannot let your Protoss opponent reach that 200 mark. And I just want to apologize real fast to you guys. I am running this uh, this stream through my computer. Nothing else. I'm running the overlays, all the images and things like that. And uh, uh, at times we'll experience a little bit of a frame rate lag. But I uh, hope you guys will just bear with me. And uh, hopefully it won't happen too often. But let's check out the army supply. Very even. Rent slightly ahead of the other two. Or the other three, rather, but this game is it's so close. I'm surprised that uh, Team Techno Vikings is keeping up so well with two Zerg ballers of this caliber. Well, do you think they're going to have an answer for these Broodlords? It's a nice DT harassment going, trying to take down one of Rhett's expansions, but that does get cleaned up. Meanwhile, two Nexus is going down on the right side of the map, and if uh, these bases go up, that will spell a lot of trouble. But man, so many Broodlords, and there's actually five Ultras out as well. Not a whole lot of upgrades on many of these units, though, so. Uh, they're, they're not, like, super amazing, but still, when you've got uh, those Broodlords, and how many Infestors are actually left right now? I'm taking a look here. There's actually only four Infestors, and they're all Rets, so that attack... I mean, Infestors, those are the units you want to keep alive. You want to bring them home after your attack and, you know, uh, just make them super cost-effective, but uh, they ended up losing a lot. Nonetheless, still uh, very scary-looking armies right here. Scary indeed. We've got Ultras from Reds, Broodlords from Chef. They've got every unit imaginable. I think the only unit they haven't made this game is a Baneling. Uh, we're even seeing an yeah. Overseer up here, and unfortunately I don't expect to see any Banelings anytime soon. Not when you've got T3 available. But they are able to pick off this uh, Nexus from GL Richie, and it looks like we might see something scary here coming up. Ultras and Broodlords, are they going to run in? There is some size storm, but none of them going off. And there's one feedback, but there's just not very many investors to feedback those tanks in great position down there. But these Broodlords just have no counter. There are no Vikings, two Vikings, but they're just not doing enough damage. And uh, I think the Zerg team here might just demolish this entire army. Depends on if they can get to those tanks or not. Yeah, I mean, the tanks are just not doing what they need to do. There's no Viking support to the Broodlords. I mean, you saw him un a second ago, and then he's like, well, I guess I have to siege up because we need to hold this position. And Vikings are starting to rally over here, but there's just enough Corruptors out that uh, the Broodlords are perfectly safe, and these Ultras are just powering through absolutely everything. And uh, the tanks continue to fall back, and we've got more Roaches, a whole bunch of Infestors from Sheth here. I think we'll see a, a couple of fungals go down, a bunch of infested Terran bombs, and that is basically going to be all she wrote here. The you know these guys put up a valiant fight, but uh, you know, you're playing against some of the best Zerg players in the world, and they're just macroing so stinking well. GG coming out from both those guys. GG indeed, and if that didn't cut it, Red had seven more ultras on the way, so. <laughs>